with this thing on the sheet plan, on the feet hands. It's on the feet It's on the feet hands. Um, hi guys, uh, welcome back <laughs> to, to another episode of OnlyFans. We should have recorded, you, I know, he has, this is Uriah Hall, he has no idea what the show is. Hello, I am here to be amongst great white folks. I am so excited. He literally DM'd me on Instagram, was like, I'll do that, I'll do that podcast, that thing you do out of your apartment, and I was like, Pat, I, this I, guy has no, no idea who we are. <laughs> we can trick him. It feels like we can trick them real easy. I so far I am drugged. They gave me drug when I walked through door. <laughs> <laughs> He's already gotten in fights with three doormen. <laughs> what the hell? Like it's, yeah. Uriah Hall is here, you guys. Recently retired um, UFC fighter, <laughs> I guess. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I could have done a lot of research and chose not to. <laughs> I don't hit women. <laughs> You said you like I'll say what you said earlier though. He's never hit a woman, but I don't hit women, but I'll shake a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. And me, I would like that. I'd be like, oh man, I can come from this. <laughs> shake me. Fuck? I know your eye probably thinks he's the only black guy with a blue check mark who's been in my DMs. I have no but idea. uh first of all, I did not go in with any sexual remarks. All I said was, Oh my god, you're funny. Uh, I'm in New York. I will do your po- uh, some shit like that. I will do your podcast, and then yeah. you go wink, 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 and then like I did eggplant not do emoji, that. eggplant emoji. That's a lie. I'm one of the good blacks. I would never do that. And then like the word consent, and like xxxxx. I did not. <laughs> send a man to jail right now. I'm joking. Oh, um, this is it. so exciting. Yeah. When's the last time you fought? Oh like, God. Uh, what month is this? I don't know. In my brain, are you gonna have a PTSD <laughs> attack though? If you freak out on my couch, I'm no, bringing no, no, my no, dog back out of my bedroom. That's the army and football players. No, I I, okay. I fought uh, July, I think. Yeah. Might have been the beginning of July, and um, it didn't go so well because the guy I competed against was a hugger. He was like, "Oh man, I, I've seen your fights, and I don't want to strike with you, so I'm gonna hug you." I know and what that looks like. <laughs> I know what he's talking about. I've watched fights. I know. I, that, that's really boring for the audience, It is. Too. It, you know, he's a grappler, and granted, I had the opportunity to still do my thing as a striker. I know how to defend myself, but those styles are usually hard to uh, go up against. You know, they don't really beat you. It's just like they just kind of try to wear you down. They hug you to death, like hug a you phony bitch. It's Did just, you try kissing him? I should have, you know, I mean, like, at some point. Like on his neck, like just like I, I probably, If I did, then it would have stood us up, but it sucked. <laughs> it really sucked. It's one of the worst ways to go out. Um, fuck. Well, let's talk about a happier time. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about, when did you start fighting? God, I started when I was 16 years old. 16. I started training. Yeah. And uh, am I looking at you? What am I looking it's, we have like a two shot, so you can do both. You can engage with our mostly male fan base um, on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> Either or. Or you can engage with me. It's okay, it's. Let me get into character right now. I mean, I do I do both. Yeah, kick your shoes off. There's a there's a button right here if you want to recline. We're a big feet oh, podcast. Okay. The audience loves there feet. There you go, scoot in. So when I started, right, it Love was it. like. <laughs> Funny. I was 16 years old and, yeah. you know, just coming to this country. It was just such from? a good... From Jamaica. Never heard of it. Oh, my God. So many good-looking black guys. Anyways, I came like, here. Poor Americans go to vacation, right? <laughs> they only stay in a resort. <laughs> Don't go to the hood. Okay. But, of course, they'll be like, oh, you got some weed? Anyways, weed. I came here as 13 years old and, you know, um, up on arrival, I was bullied. And not bullied underst- here? Yeah. And you know, I was a little chunky. Not too fat, but I like just... Like Pat fat or, like, regular? Pat is built. Oh, Ford, Bill for tough. But I, <laughs> I was just different. You know, I had an accent. My Jamaican accent was there. I was like, yo, I'll well, go on my resume. They'd be like, what the fuck are you saying? So I lost that because, you know, in school, you got to look the part. I wish Similarly. I could go back in time and just slap myself. But like, fuck all yeah, these like dumb stay motherfuckers. stay Jamaican. Stay wild. If I have a kid, I'm going to tell him, listen, when you get bullied, fuck this fuck motherfucker up. up. You're going to get suspended and yeah. we're going for ice cream. Like That's it. There's no Done deal. talking, no. Suspension's cool anyway. Usually the teacher in, tar- in charge of suspension is a shitty teacher who yeah. doesn't want to be there anyway. Yeah. You just get the two hours, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. if you get suspended, you probably have to do detention, too. So you're probably going to have to. I, I don't I mean, remember. I used to get detention almost every day because of I would break dress code. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so bad. So, like, same Z's. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I w- I'm saying I don't like getting suspended. you should also. I I make too many dog analogies. I know that, but you'll see like the little dogs that like would typically be bullied, right? Come uh-huh. into the dog park, and a lot of the times they'll just run at the biggest dog, right? <laughs> they do. They'll just like fuck you, like I'll fight, I'm, I'll fucking fight, and then like the other dogs like leave them alone, kind of, because mm. like they know. They know. Was it groups of kids picking on just you? Um, not like in the movies. It was more of just small remarks. You know, mm. you, you hear stories like this. Not to be too serious, but kids who take the wrong route i mean i remember uh getting beat up so bad that i i i got off the bus and i i walked the rest of the which was like five miles home and i'm not sure if i can say this but i i had the intention of going back to school and hurting these kids with a weapon i i I was looking for a weapon the whole weekend and me being 15 years old which is predominantly that age for those type of thoughts I couldn't find one. I would go up to strangers in my neighborhood. I'm like, hey, man, you know I can get a gun. I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. Get the fuck out of here, man. We yeah. asking, you know? And come Monday, I was like, I got to go through this shit again. And then another stage where I wanted to commit suicide, I contemplated it. I went mm. on my roof. Luckily, I couldn't because my mom told me as a kid, if you kill yourself, you're going to hell. I was like, shit, I can't do it. Mm. <laughs> but it was just a weird time. And I understand where a lot of kids come from. So now I take the initi- initiative to go to schools. I do a lot of... Uh, anti-bullying campaigns you know with my buddy and yeah i talk about my experience i'm, I'm i want to further go into that because yeah. yes kids are a generation and i don't think a lot of kids understand that that's just a, a small stage but in it your feels life. like your whole world when it's happening exactly to you. there's like, nowhere to look it's they probably, don't know that there's yeah. taxes <laughs> you no, know there there's <laughs> jobs, like, jobs like these bullies one of them's probably dyslexic it's never exactly. gonna get a job like yeah, yeah. No, just kidding, dyslexics. You guys can work. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't even hear that. Please, part thanks for being contributing members of society. Dyslexics Boy, unite. Right? <laughs> Shout out to Emma Willman. <laughs> she's my favorite <laughs> dyslexic. Uh, she's a really good comedian. What? <laughs> what? I dug myself into a little hole. That's so fascinating, though. I mean, I think it's good that you're so freaking honest about it. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I thought about this shit when I was getting bullied, when I was. You know, every, when you're that age, everything oh, yeah. seems so important. Like, yeah. and, you're, and you're social. Like, forget yeah. about, like, I stopped caring about getting good grades, like, my, I, I think my senior year in high school. Mm-hmm. And I had always gotten, like, 3.8, this and that. But, like, you just got to a place, like, socially where you're, like, I don't fit in here anymore. Right. I'm not thriving. I'm not connecting with anyone. I don't have friends. I'm, like, get me out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted it, to go to New York. It was a weird transition, but, you know, you, you So look instead back of now. shooting up to school, you started training. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You know what? I was trying not to say it like that, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> But I uh, I was going to a therapist, which was right next door to a martial arts facility at the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I came, well, first of all, when I went in there, he looked at me right away. First thing within a few minutes of me talking, he was like, you're black. <laughs> <laughs> Besides that, his eyes said it. But he was How like, are you pay for this? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. 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 Oh, that was good. Oh. I'm sorry. Now you messed me up. <laughs> I'm a cunt. Just hit me. Shake me. Ooh, oh, shake me. Oh. Shake me. Uh, not, I don't hit women on TV. So the first thing. <laughs> this is going to get demonetized. Forget about TV. <laughs> what am I even saying? I forgot completely what I was You're t- saying. You went to the therapist. Yeah, okay. Right yeah. Next so the, the first thing arts. he said was, you have no confidence. And wow. I guess he picked up on that. And um, I don't remember everything he said, but I just remember that only. And leaving right next door is the martial arts facility. I went in, and the rest is history. Yeah. So. You went in, and, and you were like, I'm ready to, like, fight. Yeah. But guess what? Prior to that, there's okay. a great story here. Okay. I learned how to fight from a video game called Tek- Tekken. I could say it. Tekken. I, I, that's, like, one of the few video games I know. You, you, I Tekken. Actually used to compete, I used to be the like, girl. There was a couple girls. There's girl characters, yes. Yeah. You know in Power Rangers, everybody was like, I'm the Red Ranger. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> I uh, move all the furniture and I put in the VHS. You, you remember that? Are you old enough to remember that? Yeah. Okay. So no. <laughs> and I put the VHS in and, you know, I would, I would record it and that's how I learned how to fight. So you would when copy I, the moves. I would copy the moves and, you know, it helped me in my fighting later yeah. on in my career. But when I actually started martial arts, I was excelling fast and they you, were looking they at were me like, like, what? And you're like who the fuck is this baby? kid? <laughs> yeah. I didn't say anything because I felt embarrassed. <laughs> but... Fast forward 15, 20 years later, I met the creators of uh, Tekken and Comic-Con, and I was just, like, fanboying out, like, oh, my God. And they invited me. I did a whole speech. That's a great collab. Yeah. But I I just want to be in the video game. So, Tekken, please hit me up. Uriah and Tekken. I know. 
They, they, I'm in a video game, but it sucks. It's uh, ESPN uh, UFC game, but it's trash. I'm skinny. I mean, as fuck. my dumb fans will check it out. Yeah, don't play it. Don't. <laughs> I have. It. I don't get any Pat sales has it. from it. Don't okay. don't play it, bro. You're, Just you're contributing to Pat's sedentary I get no money because you know. <laughs> but <laughs> Tekken, if you're watching. What would like? Where would your career take you? Like, what do you want to? What do you want to do? You got time now. Um. So I've been asked that question a lot. And sorry. Fine. Skip it. Like what uh, the fuck? <laughs> um. Uh, but <laughs> like a lot of people reached out to DM me like, "Hey man, can I do an interview just to kind of talk about why you left?" You know, people like you're still in your prime. A couple of my coach uh, coaches in different region, they're like, "Bro, you sure about this?" Like, yeah. But you know, there's a lot of politics and everything you do. I'm sure there's politics in your in your field. Yeah, but, I'm a Republican. Um, <laughs> I'm a I'm a human being with a conscience. I'm just gonna leave it right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I lived it was, hard. <laughs> there was a lot of politics, so you know I don't want to get too much into detail, but it's it, the game is changing. Okay. And it's one of those reasons why I had to step away from it. I, do I have passion for it? Absolutely. Yeah. Do I wake up with an itch? Yes. Okay. But for four or five days after I retired, I fell into this deep depression. I I sat on my couch just like this. I didn't move. And Same I, kind of couch. No. This oh, we're both rich. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> no, I got a cloth material. Ew. Ew. Anyway. <laughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> um, I couldn't move. I didn't want to do anything. I felt very discouraged. I would wake up at four just to get myself up mentally. A.M. A. M. And I already had problems sleeping already. And it took me a while to get out of it. I started to get out of my house. I remember looking at the sunlight. And yeah. I went to training and, you know, I didn't even feel like doing it. And then I slowly, the great thing about that was I had the, the right group of people, my friends, my confidants to really, uh, you know, uh, be encouraging. And yeah. at times like this, you really see who's really there and stuff like yeah. that. So I'm a big attest to energy and the real people. And, you know, I you get, get it. Bullshit. I lost a roast battle once. And you lost it a was what? A roast battle. You like, know, oh, like, you gotta watch. You'd love these. Like, like rap battle or yeah, oh, roast, but jokes. roast. Oh, okay, yeah. like your mom is so fat. Exactly. She fell in the Grand Canyon and got stuck. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> That's all I know. And this was my first roast battle okay. I had ever done, and okay. I went in there pretty confident. You know, I'm like I'm cute and funny, <laughs> and I got my ass kicked. I Damn. lost so bad, uh-huh. and they titled the video "Fat Nerd Destroys Hot Chick Comedian." It had something like seven, eight million views on youtube damn and it racked that up fast and it's just hate 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 and it's just like you're not funny da, 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 you know mm. and this whole thing like, but I'm, not a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not funny so i'm like a <laughs> tiny 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 this is me relating to you i'm like a tiny <laughs> tiny tiny i was depressed as fuck maybe not four or five days uh. but like you know i feel like a lot of people go through that those times yeah. where it really feels hopeless. I'm an alcoholic. I haven't had a drink in four over four years. And more so when I was drinking, you know, you wake up some mornings and it's just like this feeling in your stomach of total hopelessness. Mm. Like goals feel so far away. Right. Like it's just hard. So I think it's nice that you're so vulnerable. And let people yeah. know. I mean, I'm a human being. We're all are. And yeah. especially right now, I feel a lot of people mask things. Yeah. Instagram is a test of that because I met some people. I'm like, man, you do not look like that. Like, <laughs> Tell me about how it. How this fuck is these dates? Yeah, <laughs> that yeah. I go on these catfishing motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> that's still happening, catfishing. Only to me, I guess. I thought the show would like get people to respect. Like, oh, <laughs> oh no, it, it made nerds think they could do it more. They're like, oh, great idea. I can't wait. Yeah, honesty is key, but I, I feel you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of people would look at somebody like you, right? From the outside looking, it's like, yeah, okay, maybe he retired, maybe he lost or whatever, but like, he's still fucking Uriah Hall, you know? Like, I'm Jake, I like ride a plow. Jake. I, you know, like, whatever he does, I feed hens, I don't know, like, so. I get haters all the time. It, sure, but. but I, I, I love it. I encourage them, I'm like, dude, bring five of your friends and meet me at my gym, because <laughs> it's not going to be fair if I fight you only, like. I can kill you, bro. What are you, Would what are you, you doing? come out of retirement if like somebody disrespected your girlfriend in a bodega? Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I think you know when you're young, you have that mentality. I'm very secure in myself. Mm. I, of course, I'm going to defend you know whoever I'm with their honor. But what if they don't have any honor, like me? <laughs> I mean, life. Listen, we're all going to die. We're not going <laughs> to. We're not going to make it out of here. But I'm going to use this thing that I realize is so valuable these days. It's time. Yeah. I can never get it back. It's who I give it to, who I spend it with. Uh, 
it, it's just something that I've re really focused on. And granted, we created time that doesn't really exist. So mm. what I'm going to do with this moment that we live in and how am I going to become a better version of myself? I'm mm. a little detached from this weird ass world that we live in. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Some things that some people are doing are like, what? Yeah, they don't. I mean, I think there's stages in your life. You know, when you were a kid, you know, you just had this perception that, oh, I can do anything. And then society be like, no, you can't. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And then you just go to school and school's like, yeah, you really can't. And then you have to rebuild yourself. And then you get a corporate you job are. and you're trying to be exactly. creative. And, and they're and like, this dead. isn't funny. You're and then walking around dead. You just so. like, I, people, people ask me questions. I like, I have an OnlyFans, right? Mm -hmm. And like people love to, and I'm not really shy about its success. Mm -hmm. And people just love to like try to diminish you and chip away. And it's like via. Like, I don't get that. Like but, I argue with this guy uh, this morning on my page. And I'm okay. like, I mean, I was entertaining it. But then at one point I was like, my man, do you literally just wake up and hate? Like, yeah. let me understand you. How do you do that? It's it's all from insecurity, right? Yeah. And, I, and you can see it. It's so transparent. Like when people, you know, like I'm also like a really good comic. Like I'm a working comic. Like. And, and it's a lot of times it's comics that are kind of like not doing as well as me. They love to like kind of like take shots like, oh, like you have Auto an old, you have an OnlyFans though. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, they all, mostly men, but they love talking shit. Sometimes women too. I thought you guys were like a team or. I mean, I have a great group of friends and I love and respect them. Uh. But um, there's just, I don't know. You can always tell when people aren't happy with themselves. Because they right. just have to take shots all the time. And I'm like, I love, like, fucking with people make fun of you. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But if your whole persona is just like, I better take shots at everybody else. Because if they look at me, yeah. they're going to know. Well, it's, it's your reaction, right? I mean, if, if, if someone says something to you, it's your reaction. Mm -hmm. And I think at a young age, it's hard to understand that. Because we're so prideful. And at the same time, we don't want to let anybody down. And, yeah. oh, you said it about me. That's not true. That's not who I was. I am. And in my early career, you know, I'm from New York, man. I'm. You say some shit, I'm probably going to punch you in the face. Yeah. So I wasn't used to that. Some guy cut me in line at Christidis yesterday. I yelled <laughs> at him at the top of my lungs. The whole line. And the, the, the guy behind me goes, well, that's welcome to New York. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you. Welcome to New York. Fuck you. Get Wait, out of there. What do you mean he just stepped in front of so you? So there is two lines and then the lottery line, uh -huh. you know, and that still counts as a line. That's not its own separate <laughs> line. He took a look at the back. There was like 10 of us in line and he had like toilet paper, like with stuff in his arms. And then he went and he got in line. I was like, he's cutting. He's cutting. <laughs> and he turned yeah. back and he goes, this is a different line. I'm like, no, we're all this. I was like, you know what you're doing, you punk. I'm yeah. a punk and a liar. <laughs> you're a liar. Yeah, I have no problem calling. I mean, you're a doorman. I called him out. It was so good. But you weren't wrong. Because yeah. I overheard the tone that the door guy was giving him. He yeah. was like, yeah, very short with you. Yeah, I was like, hey, this Five. He was like, "Yes, it is." <laughs> I like, so I was like, "Yo, my man, what's up? You good?" Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, I, I told you it is." But I know where that comes from. It's a sense of insecurity. He probably thinks, right. "Oh, she, you know, this big black guy is going to see her." He's probably thinking we're gonna make porn or something. We which, are making porn, by the way. Which is not wrong. But <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of times, and I'm gonna touch a, a real subject right now. Realer than mass shooting. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm fucked up. That's fucked up. This is the best episode. But ever. what I've noticed as a black man mm -hmm. is that a lot of other black men, for some reason, we don't look at each other like a like when I see white people. Is there the two versions? It's either like, which is I'm scared, or <laughs> like, uh, you know, which is like, okay, this is one of the good blacks. You're I usually so get one funny. of those. <laughs> but when so I see funny. another black person, it's usually like a. And when I'm like, my man, can we share this turf? Relax. Yeah. You know, it's Thursday. I'm allowed to come here on Thursday. <laughs> so I, I get that a lot. And even with interracial couples, you know, I, I'm not lying when I say this. And almost every interracial couple guy can attest to this. Okay. When we pass each other, if I have a, a white girlfriend and he has a white girlfriend, mm -hmm. we will never look at the girl. Really? <laughs> we'll look at each other. It's almost like, you're going to look. No, you're going to look. That's like one of those What are you moments. guys saying to each other? Congratulations. Like, well... <laughs> I think what initially means when we pass each other, we turn around and just kind of get. <laughs> I dated a black guy for a few years, and we got looks. How's your credit? What? How was mine or his? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
He's way more successful than I am. Oh, because normally they fuck your credit up. But go no, on. no. He, I mean, I would have fucked his up if I, had, <laughs> if I had stayed with him. He's very successful. Probably my most successful ex. Okay. Um, but we would get looks too. Oh yeah, all the time. Oh, black girls hate that shit. Yes. Fuck you That's doing all our good black men. A lot. And like older black women sometimes too. We'd oh, be on yeah. the train and we were like very cuddly. We were a very cuddly couple. We're always holding hands uh, and this and that. And you should have milked. Did you milk it? Did yeah, you just look at him and start caressing more? We were shit? both comics. So we yeah. would laugh. We would be like, let's fucking bother him. <laughs> I would lick his face on the subway. Oh, man. I'd that's make awesome. eye contact that's with some awesome. old woman staring at us. <laughs> <laughs> but it goes both ways, though. It's not just, you know, like a white, older white person be like, oh, or it, you, you get I get black people, too. You know, if can I'm you imagine someone. caring about somebody else's relationship? It would never cross my mind. Do you know? It's so weird to me that people have like, where is that coming from? The yeah. judgment? Like, what the fuck do you care? Are you trying to date him? Are you trying to date me? Beat it. <laughs> Lose it. Like. You're a yeah, loser. But it's an old school mentality and some people grow out of it. Some people don't. How do you feel about girls who have only fans? If your um, girl had one, would you allow it? Um, no, I can tell already. No, you know, I think well, I would on, assume. Hold up. All right. Hold up. <laughs> I just, it, it depends. You know, it goes back to the secureness. How secure mm -hmm. am I? Mm -hmm. Where is this person in their life where they feel this is a necessary step? Mm -hmm. Am I judging at that moment? Do they feel comfortable? Is there a certain content that I feel like this is going to bother me? I mean, there's more into it. It's not just it's a nuanced conversation you, yeah, for you. It's, it's, it's not black and white. Let's sit down and talk about it. That's you know? good. How do you feel about this? How do I feel about this? Because I feel like a lot. I could be wrong, but like a lot of fighters, I feel like date porn stars a lot. <laughs> I've never dated. dated no. no, but you maybe know not what? a lot. I'm thinking of Christy Mack. I mean, that guy really beat the shit out of her or whatever. But oh, um, yeah, um, that's really the only one I can think of right now. But I know yeah. there's more. But I feel my point in saying that I feel like guys like fighters, I feel like NBA players do it, or more. NBA players yeah. like any guy who's like ha, is so secure that's like like not worried because I think the thing that guys are worried about is trolls or other people or other men saying like I've seen your girl get like her yeah, ass yeah and it comes pounded. from proud yeah or whatever or, or whatever her <laughs> ass <guess>. getting <laughs> I've seen your girl with like all her holes filled <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon and it's like. Past I wake up to your woman on my screen. Yeah, I get it. So, but to me, I, there's I maybe a certain guy who's almost like would enjoy that. It's like, yeah, say something. Like I'll break your face. Like I'll kill you. Again, I go back to secure. I'm I'm very secure. Yeah. So I don't look at it like that. Will you tell every guy that's ever said I wasn't funny that you'll break his face? <laughs> I'll, I'll. Am I still getting that check? Yeah, you got it. I will break your face. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? You fucking trolls. Yeah, trolls. But what is a troll, though? You know, what, what, what's a troll? You like, know what I think they are? Uh, They're our friends. Sometimes I think, now maybe not our friends, uh -huh. but satellite people that are adjacent to our lives. Yeah. They make fake accounts because the trolls know yeah. what gets under our skin. Right. They know how to hurt, like how to maybe hurt us. It doesn't do hurt you me. Get a, do you get offended by these trolls? No, I love it. I was on this show called My Big Fat Fabulous Life. Have you ever heard of it? No. Our shows like that, like my 600 pound life, like okay. where they glorify obesity. It's fucking it's Which disgusting. Weird. Yeah. Let's 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 fix these guys and make fun of them. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about fat people? Um, it depends. I used to be an instructor. Okay. So <laughs> I was brutally honest. I mean, there are fat people that came and like, yeah, I just want to work out once a day, once a week. Once and I'm a like, week. Once a week. And I'm like, you know, you're gonna die, right? Yeah. So I was honest with them. Mm -hmm. But you know, some people have problems. But what's that? Um. Thyroid. Thyroid problem. Yep. So I'm not going to make fun of that. But I think for the people, like, this is who I am. And I'm like, no, it's not. Like, right. you're just using that as an excuse. Uh, uh, not according to your skeletal structure. Exactly. It's like, not who you are. You're supposed you to be are. a lot less than that. It's, it's mainly discipline. Because I know a lot of people who fall out of that category. It's discipline. People hit me up. Hey, how do I get in shape? This is not work. I'm like, it's discipline, bro. You got to put in the time. Right. Everybody wants that magic pill. Yeah. And if it's not working to their standard, like, you know, I'm just going to accept being fat. Okay, well, if that's who you are, do you, boo-boo. Yeah. But I don't hate him, but I will tell him to I, people face. Say, people joke with me, like, Karen hates fat people. I'm like, no, I love them. It's a powerful them. word. I don't, I don't, I think you hate them. I just don't lie to their faces. Yeah, no, I'm not. You're the ones who. You know what? I feel uncomfortable with you fat motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I fucking said it. I You're fat it. ass I love around you. me taking up space. <laughs> yeah, I fucking said it. You want me to be real? I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> Guess what? People's uncomfortable with me being black. I don't mind. That's their opinion. <laughs> but yes, I'm uncomfortable. Uh, I know, but you can't change being black. They could change. I can't, yeah. See? 
Can't change my skin color. I mean, you want to trade places? I'll say the N word and you can raise <laughs> interest rates. <laughs> I just like, I think it's a f- huge problem in this country. And like, oh my God, have you traveled outside of this country and eat food? Like in eat. Australia, I ordered a burger and homeboy came back. I'm like, hey, uh, can I get some ketchup? Uh, oh, that'd be $2, Mike. Extra. Uh, I'm like, but uh, you eat a burger with, with ketchup. The little condom that we get here for free. They're charging two it. bucks for Oh, I know. Because they were like, oh, Pat you Pat has five fat? in his pocket right now. Jesus, that's fucked up. <laughs> Even syrup. <laughs> Throw me a mustard. <laughs> Five. That's his blood type, maple syrup. No, Pat's But I, I encourage a lot of Americans, especially Texans, to get out of this country. The southern portions. I went to like North Carolina when I was filming that show and I mm. ordered a pulled pork platter and I lived off it for four days. Oh, my God. It's the size of it. We don't care. We are freedom. I'm like, motherfucker, we are free as fuck. No, yeah. Because in North Korea, just to go on YouTube, you got to put in your fucking social security. Oh, my God. YouTube. Do you really? Oh, yeah. You, you got to, because they want to see what the fuck you Google. No shit. Yo, they don't play, man. Oh, my we're, God. North Korea would have so hung free. me already because I'm Googling some <laughs> weird shit. How to get out of here. <laughs> That would have been uh, a troll. I would have lasted a day in North Korea. Oh, my gosh. Says here you're looking to get out. <laughs> Throw me in prison. Do you yeah. like work camps? But I think we're free, man. It's just the system's a little broken, and, you know, we have the opportunity to fix it. But I it, I feel like it's such a rat race here because when I go outside this country, the government kind of hook them up. The government over there in different countries are very, like, by the book. And, you know, there's no free health care over here. In the Netherlands, there's free health care. The roads are great. The roads are so good. When the rain falls, the water pulls down. That's why you don't see any splash. Wow. You know, they, when you lose your job, they come to your house and console you. Hey, I know it was rough for you. Let's get that in feet. In the Here's Netherlands? Some stuff. Yeah, man. They take care of you. Wow. And they pay you. I couldn't find any homeless people. How many homeless people in this fucking country? There was and one yelling this going? morning about ketamine or something. Yeah. I don't know where my money's going. If anybody know, I know 70% of it from an inside source. Says so it's going to the military for all that testing shit. So I'm paying for the military. I mean, freedom. Then nuke somebody, you know, make it exciting. Like, what are we paying for? I mean, what are all these tests? Like, we don't kill anybody. We just get our ass kicked all the time. So we're, the, we're the police of the world, so we gotta. Well, we stink because Putin's <laughs> running Ukraine. I don't know, like whatever fucking. Hey man, if you don't like, you can get out. Kim Jong Un or whatever is he still alive? That dude. How how no one has taken this guy out yet. I I mean I get it, but I feel like all they there's a lot it. of people. Like y'all can't just form a gang, Thank look around, we're like oh shit, there's there's millions of us. We can get this motherfucker. Get him. You know, but it's the world we live in, man. We're being controlled a little bit, but it is what it is. Our healthcare system is jacked up. Uh, I had an inflamed yeah. rotary cuff. Ever heard of it? What? <laughs> what was that? It, in rotary cuff? My rotator cuff. Oh, okay. So it was a sports injury from throwing my dog her ball too many times. Okay. And like, I decided to combine Chinese and Western medicine to tackle it. Because I'm a freelancer. I don't have health insurance. I don't like... People are like, who's your primary care physician? It's like, I don't have one. God helps me out sometimes. Go on. Yeah. And I went, I got cupping done. Mm. You ever gotten cupping done? I got cupping. And then they gave me some NSAIDs or whatever. And the guy was like, you could go to an orthopedic surgeon or this and that. And like, it's going to cost X amount of millions and millions of dollars. And I'm like, I just, I don't trust our medicine. Big pharma's fucking assholes. My Advair, that I get the off-brand kind, but Advair, which is just a regular asthma medicine that regulates breathing... If you, if I didn't have health insurance or if I didn't have um, money, I'm rich. Uh, <laughs> I would get it, it costs almost four hundred dollars a month, oh. a month for just to breathe. Oh yeah, it's fucking psychotic. It's uh, and it's like a like twenty five dollars in other countries. But that's a big markup. And I meet people that are in like, oh, I'm in uh, pharmaceutical sales. I'm like, I hope you get hit by a bus. Cool, <laughs> cool career, you fucking sheep. That's what you got, pills? I guess I'll sell pills. You stink. You, you got to do your own research. And I know a lot of people who have played victim to the system and it's not helping them. And they have to do their own research and they find a cure. I mean, first of all, if you start finding out some shit that's going to work, they're going to take you out. There's a dude that invented oh. water as gas, and he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy that's making water out of the air, and I'm sure they're going to get him. I, I hope they don't. But, you know, they sabotage a bunch of his machine, and he puts it in these neighborhoods where these homeless folks can get free water, and 
the way they sabotaged it, it was done by someone that's not what they're doing. So you can't try to help the world, you know. Johnson and Johnson could have made the cure for fucking cancer already, but they're like, let's get these motherfuckers to pay us. It's sick. We just when you're super rich and you have a, a better income, it's not something to worry about. I know. I feel like they don't see people as people anymore. No, no one looks at me as a person. It's like, oh, it's a black guy. No, I'm, I'm a person, bro. I can speak well. And I've had that. I've met people because I'm very sociable. I met a, it's kind of funny and fucked up. I met someone on the plane and we we're having a casual conversation, older white gentleman. And a couple of fans came up to me, took pictures, and he starts raising his eyebrow, like, who the like, fuck who is this you? motherfucker? Who are you? So he was like, who are, are like, you? like, I'm Amistad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they used to call me in school. Amistad. Oh, trigger. <laughs> I'm getting ready to be shooken. You know what? I'm done. <laughs> I appreciate the time. <laughs> But they called me Amistad in school, wow. and I used to use Amistad. intelligence. <laughs> I would use intelligence to get him back. Okay. I was like, well, first of all, Amistad is a ship. If you're referring to me as a character, <laughs> his name is Digimon Hatsu, which he's very handsome and he's rich. Like, but um, Wasn't he married to um, What's-Her-Face for a minute? The girl with the big booty. What? The girl with the big booty. Yeah, I mean. Russell she, Simmons' ex-wife? Russell Simmons' ex. Yeah. I'm looking at her face, but I can't remember her name. The girl with the big booty. Yeah, she had a big booty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had a big booty. Um, she was beautiful, what was I saying? Beautiful she's, face. She's, she's beautiful. Uh, but I'm like, what the fuck do you do? You know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like one of these kids one day was like, uh, Kim Kardashian is famous. And the other kid was like, what does she do? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> she's just famous. Ray J. But I'm not hating. Her. Oh, Ray J. <laughs> that's what got her famous. That's not her. That's Lala. Did you pull up? Oh, no, no that's it is. Her. Kimora. That's oh, her. that's her back in the day. Her name is Kimora. Kimora Lee Simmons. Yeah. She's a badass, too. So I feel like she took Russell Simmons' money and flipped it into her own career. She was a model. She was a model, I think, when he married her. And then she started, like, a clothing line and shit. I could be wrong. Hey, do you, boo-boo. <clears throat> oh, she's uh, dating a dude now. Who are you dating? So I'm in a weird situation. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're going to actually answer this. Um, <laughs> what, what's her first and last name? <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say, uh, but you know it's weird. It's Dakota and, Fanning, <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest. That'd be fine. It's, <laughs> it's a weird situation where you know we 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 were on and off, and mm. it's a weird transition. There's honesty, but I think we're in a place where it's like you know I just retired too, so I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. And she has work, and she has all these stuff, and it's kind of like a lingo. You know, I'm not here to lie about it, but it's like a lingo where I don't understand. A lot yeah. of times when you don't understand something, it's like, oh, you're supposed to. And I'm like, I just don't understand it. Mm. So I'm giving space and, you know, she's got to do her thing and we're trying to figure it out, but we're not. It's it's very weird. I don't want to call it a situation ship. I think a situation ship is like. It's pretty on trend. It's definitely in the zeitgeist right now. A who? The z- <laughs> situation ship. It's like uh. a concept. Okay. But you don't have to say it. No, listen, I care about this person. Yeah. I just don't know where we're at. Hey, and, I've been there. And right now, I'm just using my my free time to kind of find who I am. Because yeah. I felt my my whole life, my sport kind of identifies me as that. And I feel like if you're in a relationship, you want to feel like you are doing you. Exactly. Like you're becoming whatever you're supposed to become. You're achieving whatever you're supposed to achieve so mm-hmm. that you're sort of a gift for another person. Exactly. And I have given the best advice. I mean, I literally gave advice yesterday to two of my good friends my friends call me for advice with okay. relationship, but i suck at it <laughs> but i'm so <laughs> you're fucking good at good. giving advice i am great at what did you advice. tell them um chloroform so <laughs> 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 helps everything. no i think you know it's different culture he's greek and she's you know hispanic and oh you know, spicy there's, <laughs> there's a lot of miscommunication i think because you know i i think the spanish culture mostly is very passionate and he's a passionate individual as well but he's also a man, so I'm trying to remind her that, you know, there's certain characteristics you can't cross because culturally you're used to that, and he's not understanding that. Yeah. And it's like love languages, and I'm trying to explain their love languages, trying to teach them how to kind of communicate with each other without overstepping, to take sides. So I, ha- I had to listen to both of them, but it came down to patience. And I said, you guys don't have the patience right now because there's ego. There's ego on his side to say, all right, I don't want to fight anymore. And there's ego on her side to be like, you're not listening. So I'm like, mm. if you guys let go of that, then you guys can start listening to understand each other and not listening to reply. So I give great advice. I just suck. Yeah, that was good advice. <laughs> I'm like, I'm thinking I should start applying some of these things. <laughs> Patience. Yeah, it's, it's, but I personally think it's starting with yourself first. In yeah. order for me to be honest with you, I got to be honest with myself. Yeah. What do I want? What do I like? Do I like her? Does she suck my balls right? Like, I got to be comfortable <laughs> with me and then 
you know, it's like having a one on one in the mirror. And then I, I say how do you to feel you, about Andrew Tate's philosophy about women? What what was his philosophy? Again? He thinks that they're like property and they're like second class and like more like dogs. And I people. get it. It's an old school mentality. Mm-hmm. I feel like his father probably implanted that in him. Plus, mm-hmm. from a cultural standpoint, was he Iran or some shit? What is he? He's uh, been, he lives in, he lives in Romania either Romanian now, or Croatian. One and Romania, and they have some beautiful ass women. Yeah. And the thing with Romanian women, y'all are beautiful. You know, I've seen them with some busted ass dude. I'm like, You're right. what the fuck? I so mean, that happens all the time. It, <laughs> I think from a cultural point is what he's used to. Yeah. And he just has to be placed in a situation where he starts to feel more. Understand it. I just like of all the guys that like are hitting. Like, I get hit on a lot, right? Like I got like lots of DMs this and that. And I feel like lately, every time I kind of give a guy a chance, mm. he doesn't fully like grab it. It's always what do you like mean a chance. Like when I'm like, all right, I'll go on a date with you. Uh-huh. My thing is, if you hit me up and you're in my DMs and I agree to go on a date with you, now it's all on you. Where are we going? What time we're going? Etc. Oh. <laughs> Your eye doesn't like that. Okay. I just like when a guy's like, "Where do you want to go?" I'm like, "I've lived in New York for 20 years. I have to plan this date." No, you don't have to plan it. But I, first of all, I understand where you're coming from. I'm already getting upset. <laughs> I'm gonna hug and shake myself. I understand where you're coming from. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put my shorts down. Oh man, <laughs> zoom in. Don't want to add any female viewers. Cl- anyway, clip that for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I get it. I feel. Personally, you want to be treated like a lady. It's like, all right, motherfucker, figure it out. Yeah. I need a man. I don't need a boy. Yeah. I need a man. The thing with that is uh, you have to either carry yourself to let your energy say it or you have to say it. Okay. What do you think my energy says? Your energy. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. All right. I'm very interested. What I'm, am I giving off? Um, so I'm usually good at looking at people and Reading figuring people, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> why well, Pat's laughing? Pat, shut up. I think you're a bully. I think you're insecure. <laughs> I think you're a player. <laughs> she likes to, you know, have all these guys line up, and she has like four or five separate guys because each one is individually separate and they have a certain type of characteristics she likes. She wants this ultimate dude, but she can't put them all together, so the she'll fuck them individually. <laughs> Where is he? Um, <laughs> I think you're, you're great. You're so right. Yeah. And By I, the way, the ultimate dude would be the next great reality series. For, hey, hey, for hey. Maybe a dating show for the ultimate fighter. Listen. But you're right because here, here's the thing. All these young kids hit on me, and yeah. I don't know what to do with them, but well, they are beautiful. All, you have the look, okay? I'm going to say it. There's certain look that certain white girls have that's either like, oh, yeah, she looks like she'll fuck a black guy. Like some people have that look. <laughs> or some people have that, oh, man, you know, she can – you just have that look. You have Show that look black where guys. it's like she's she's older, she's secure, it's sexy, <laughs> you know, there's potential, but at the same time, it's just very gravitational. You have that look. It's a good thing. Okay. So it's how you receive that information. Take it as a compliment first. I of am, all. thank you. And then not for me, but I'm saying in general. But at the same time, be honest. Okay. How does that affect you? Do you look at it as like, oh, please, you only have dick. Or do you be like, you know what? Let me explore because right now I'm happy to explore. Like, so then explore. I just I get. I just I'm constantly disappointed. I feel like. When were you born? <laughs> Shut up. No, no, no. I'm, just, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just trying to. Eighty-three. Not year. Ah, oh, damn it. Eighties. <laughs> Late eighties. No, I mean. I like, changed my answer. Ninety-one. <laughs> what What month were you born? May. So you're I can give my age away every time. Are you time. Taurus? Yes. Okay, so now no. we've now I was gonna ask you about astrology, so that I have a feeling you knew about it. A little bit. Yeah. I I, I feel you're you're a strong individual. First of all, yeah. I'm a Leo, so we eat Tauruses. Fucking you're, love Leos. <laughs> my whole family's Leo. My mom, my dad, my brother. Yeah, but there's a thin line with that. I'll tell you later. But you were Taurus, so what that naturally means is you're you're strong, you're bold, bull. But the thing with Taurus is, it's usually a hit and miss. What do you mean? <laughs> Meaning. All right, strong, like, bold, gotta, both good. Strong, bold. Meaning for you, <laughs> meaning for you, for where you are right now. I don't know where you are, but from gathering this your is energy, Battery Park. It's a very expensive neighborhood. <laughs> it is because that doorman was angry to see me. He was like, "Hey, man, there's only one of us on the weekends." <laughs> That's why the doorman, Seriously. who was African American, was looking at me. He had his arm like this. Yes. Like, what are you doing here? 
Antoine, you know. I would um, pay to watch you guys fight. <laughs> I'm not getting paid. But you're a strong individual, but I think right now, maybe where you are in your life, you need that counterbalance. Yeah. And a lot of these hyenas, I call them, yeah. are approaching you. So you need a man's man. Yeah. And it, and, but there's a middle middle. You can't just say, yeah. well, you got to do it. It's communication. Mm. It's like, listen, this is where I'm in my life. This mm -hmm. is how I feel. Mm -hmm. And if this comes out this way, it's because of this. Because we don't know that as men. You know, we can't read your mind. And I know there's this expectation of, well, you should know. Well, we don't. We're stupid yeah. for a reason because we're one dimensional. But y'all are crazy for a reason because so y'all are this. We really like, I like, there's a guy that I like love so much and like we hook up like once in a while. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever he's in town, now that he's retired, it's going to be a lot more. No, um, <laughs> but he like, and I overhear and it's all like guy comics and he'll be like talking and you know, I'm in the same room about like some other girl that he like Wait, wants, what, what, he, wants he, to hook up with or like has he'll hooked say it up to with. You? He'll say it in earshot, within earshot. And I'm like. I get it. I mean, I can't really do anything about it, right? Wait, hold on, it's hold on. Like, I'm not understanding. He, he's he, not that into me. He will say it to your face that what? Well, he won't say it to my face, uh -huh. but he'll, we'll be in the same room. Like, say it's like a setting like okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. Say he's over there and he's having a conversation with a guy. Uh -huh. And they'll be like, yeah, that girl's so hot. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm going to meet up with her. I'm going to maybe hook up with her, blah, blah, blah. And like, we will have hooked up like the night before. Okay. I can understand that. I think where he's coming from is we're just doing our thing. I know. But for you, there's more sensual feeling. And the truth is, like, I am not, it's not like I'm, like, monogamously, like, just, like, tunnel vision about him. Like, I have other, you know, cards in play. But I guess I'm, like, not so vocal. I, I try not to be vocal about it if he's around. So you're more private about it. Just I think you can have like an air of respect about it. Like I'm not even one time in a relationship. I've been in so many long term relationships and like fidelity has almost always been an issue. Um, to me, I, I've gotten to a point where like I don't care if you are quote unquote cheating on me. <laughs> like if I like I have seriously adopted like the Amber Rose mentality of all guys cheat. And if you don't find out that black means men don't cheat. <laughs> Black men don't cheat. <laughs> actually, my black boyfriend was the most loyal, but I wasn't in a very good place, so I cheated. But here's the thing. I didn't cheat. I asked us if we could be in an open relationship so I could cheat without feeling guilty. Um, what the fuck? fuck? I know. It was fucked up. It was, it, it was the demise of our relationship, but we try to keep it together. Oh, I love him so much. I miss, I miss him. <laughs> Maybe he'll oh get maybe he'll get, <laughs> maybe he'll get back together with me. But my thing <laughs> is um like that element of relationships which I think is typically like the downfall. Everybody acts like the biggest it's the biggest deal. It's right. like the reason for like most breakups. A woman started an Instagram account because her husband cheated on her and now every day it's like oh, off to, with like <laughs> emotional symphony music behind it off to have another conversation with my husband about his infidelity and it's okay. her whole life and i'm just like so where are you right now i wouldn't care if my, i want a boyfriend every tuesday night <laughs> maybe sundays and then the rest of the days are up for grab like it's we don't have to those don't have to be, we don't have to be together. <laughs> okay. Tuesdays and Sundays, I would like. It sounds like you put a lot of pressure on yourself. Really? Yeah. Why? Because you're very specific. And uh, it's like, if it's not working out. Well, I just out, almost always have Tuesdays and Sundays off. Not tonight, I'm working tonight, Sunday, on Labor Day weekend. <laughs> Look at us, all of us. I'm chilling, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> so, in my last relationship, it sort of like boiled to a point me working every night, almost every night, doing stand-up, which he didn't really, in his mind, respect as a job. Right. Because he would say things like, you get to do whatever you want. <laughs> oh, my God. Who have you been dating? Who these boys? <laughs> you what would hate fuck? this guy. You would have hated him. Um, you two minutes. You two minutes. We're talking. <laughs> Sorry. 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 He was um, just showing us how long it takes him to come. <laughs> too, too, all right. Too, too tired. Okay. Too. Um, so... All right. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. But I think, in my opinion, I think, first of all, take all that pressure off of you. Okay. You got to you, you say to yourself most of the time that it's okay. It's, it's okay, okay to feel this way. It's okay for all this shit. Yeah. And 
don't label yourself. If you want to go out there and get Tom, Luke, and Harry to fuck you on separate days, then go do it. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you're not going to talk about it, but that's who you are. Yeah. The same way you're honest with yourself when you're alone in this apartment and no one can see you mm -hmm. and you can do whatever you feel, you mm -hmm. kind of have to reflect that to other people so they can understand and respect that. Okay. So, you know, if you with this guy, you hook up occasionally and yeah. it makes you feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Acknowledge that. I told him right did, away. But did you acknowledge it? Oh, did I acknowledge it and yes. like take it in? Um, yeah. What does it mean for you? That I like him. Okay. So then how would you approach that? Just kill myself. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> um, there's two ways out. Okay, okay, hey, okay. I like you. Yeah. Do but you I see told something him. with this? He knows. Or, okay. Well, you just the don't want to stay in front of you. It's really funny. The last time we were hooking up, like we were hooking up and I was like, are we together? And he's like, no. And then I was like, am I even one of the women you're dating? <laughs> and he goes, no. Oh my God. This ain't a show. Okay. And he goes, no. <laughs> Wait. Sorry. I just, I love him so much. He's, I think, can I tell you what? I think he's going to come around too. I think you just give him enough space. Please don't be one of those girls. Just, just, just. Really? Yeah, you think don't. that's a bad idea? I think it's a horrible idea. Don't wait for him. It's literally like sitting in this apartment and waiting for this dude to show up. I don't know this gentleman, but I'm a guy and I can tell you if a guy loves you or if a guy's into you, he'll let you know. I know. He's into you, all right. But I think maybe he doesn't want that level. And a lot he of guys doesn't. feel like He doesn't. He said it a lot. A lot of guys feel that way. We want to feel that sense of freedom. You yeah. Know? That's why most men will cheat. Most men would cheat because my girl ain't giving me that type of loving, whether it's super nasty, whether it's super a combination nasty. of my balls and my dick, or whatever. My girl's not giving it to me, but Betsy over here knows how to eat ass. It's like, <laughs> if I'm not getting it here, I'm going to go over here. Shout out to ass-eating Betsy. <laughs> Do you, boo-boo. Um, all right. I mean, this is a great conversation. Yeah, I just mean, don't put too much pressure on it, man. Yeah. And, you know, just go out there and get some more of the dicks. I know. That's, again, when I, oh, I open up these, like, you know, commercial fishing nets that are my DMs, and we're talking, like, fucking squid after squid You know what I really, 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 really think? Because I'm listening to everything, yeah. and I, I've narrowed it down. Yeah. You need to be alone. <laughs> no, I am. No, 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 no. You <laughs> need like to really I'm be so alone. alone. And, like, you need to get to know you. You're here, you're here, and you're here, and you're here. You need to take all Pat's those. Pat's shaking his head. If you can put them all here, I think you can understand all these. And it's not from a bad place because a lot of people like so this. So no more, don't it, talk to any it's, boys. It's not about talking to any boys. I think, and I could be wrong. Yeah. I think it's a validation seeking. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it's like, oh, this is, oh, this. And you lose focus easily mm. but if you start to focus more on you then you can understand why you think like that mm. why you feel like that why this makes sense and why you shouldn't you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if you can zone it on you and it doesn't necessarily mean oh i gotta stop talking to these guys it just means let me cater more to myself so that manifestation can attract the right man i mean i love it and i'm going to and i'm really going to heed your advice and i feel like most people would be like karen doesn't need to focus on herself anymore <laughs> <laughs> well there's different ways of focus on yourself yeah i you're right i think um about like a different aspect like i'm very good with the um like self-care and physical mm. stuff but like this stuff the inside stuff yeah, what about it? I should I should zone in more, like you said. Right. I'm gonna zone but in. But it's how you zone in. Like you know how people say, Oh, I'm meditate. Gonna, I'm gonna get like productive. That's where I feel like I could zone in a little bit more. What do you mean productive? Writing. Like during the like the beginning of the pandemic, I was like writing scripts. I was like on final drafts, like this is a fucking great pilot, this, 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 this. Yeah. And then I just kind of lost it. Lost it. I like said it to a few people and I got positive feedback and this, but I got just like some critique and then I was like like a child. Yeah. But I feel like all I got to do is reopen that file and zone in. Or just be honest with yourself. Yeah. And write down what you think is more important. Is this important than this? Dick, money. <laughs> if you're on the opposite end, ladies and gentlemen, dick is always important. We'll be right back with Uriah and Karen. Uriah, tell my fans who all know who you are and they think it's so funny that I'm a fucking loser and didn't do <laughs> any research. They're all like probably like cringing this whole time watching this. I'm a tell them guy. where they can find you. They can follow you, support you. Don't Watch follow me. For Don't. your next move. Don't do it. Listen, 
Jesus invented Instagram. <laughs> there psycho. was, there was 12 motherfuckers walking around with them, okay? <laughs> That's psychotic. who invented Instagram. But you don't have to follow me if you don't want to. It's a free country. It's a free world. I don't really believe in that validation with Instagram. It's not real. What about any like projects you're working on that you want to Ooh, shine gotta, some light on? Um, be nice to one another. There we go. It's a great project. See? We're all... Bullying. Uh, you know, I have a better idea. I'm going to just give you advice instead. Can I do that? Yes. We're all fighting our own battles. Every one of us got our own shit going on. Nobody gives a fuck. And that's normal. Because I don't know you. You don't know me. But we're all battling each other. It doesn't have to take a crisis situation for us to come together like, I don't know, a burning building or some shit. You know, that's when we start going, pray for this. Why do we have to wait for something tragic to happen to start being nice to one another? Let's break that cycle and actually start being nice to one another. And if you don't know how to do it, you're probably a piece of shit. But if you look in the mirror and start asking yourself who the fuck you are, eventually you'll figure it out. And guess what? If you're a piece of shit, then own it. If you're a nice person, then own it. If you're confused, then own it. If you suck dick on Wednesdays and fuck on Thursday, own it. Own who you are. We only get one chance to do this. There's no reset button. There's no coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's just living life the best you can and be the best version of yourself. Stay black. <laughs> <laughs>